Hi there! Today we are prepping for Halloween by learning some basic special effects makeup. Specifically, scars, gashes, and other grisly wounds. This goes along with the Take and Make kit we have here at the York Library this month for teens. But all materials we're using today are basic household materials you probably already have lying around the house. Speaking of, these are the basic materials we'll be using. You will need glue, your standard non-toxic school glue, liquid foundation makeup that matches your skin tone, a makeup sponge, eyeshadow in shades of brown, black, and or red. This is optional and only serves to give your look depth and authenticity. A Q-tip, a toothpick, and some fake blood. You can buy this at pretty much any store that sells costumes, but I'll share my easy and much cheaper recipe later in this video. These materials are enough to do our first look today, a scar. But for a gash, we'll also need some Kleenex tissues. These are included in the Take and Make kit. What's not included in the kit are Vaseline, petroleum jelly, and flour, or you can use cornstarch. Those we will need for more three-dimensional looks like the wound that I'll show you. I'd also like to point out before we start that I am not a makeup artist, I'm a librarian. So everything I'm doing here is very much introductory, beginner level stuff I learned from cosplayers. If you're looking for something with a higher difficulty rating, there are thousands of tutorials out there on YouTube and TikTok. Godspeed. The first look that we're going to do is a scar. Step one is to decide where you want to put your scar. For ease of demonstration, my canvas today is the back of my hand but yours can be pretty much wherever you want it. The only area you should definitely avoid is the area around your eye. You shouldn't risk getting anything in your eye, but also the skin around your eye is extremely sensitive. And on that note, if you have sensitive skin, do a test with your materials on a small patch of skin before you go all in and make sure that you don't have bad reaction to anything. And now the scar. First thing we need is some glue. And now you can use your a paintbrush if you want, you can use a Q-tip if you'd like. I am just gonna use my finger and I'm gonna dab it into the glue and start swiping it on the back of my hand. I'm gonna just swipe it across the back of my hand, going in real thick across the area where I want there to be a scar and just make a good thick coating there. I'm not worried about blurring out the edges, we will worry about that later. And then I'm gonna pick up my toothpick and I'm going to carve a line through that glue where I want the scar to be. And once you got that going, you can go back in with the glue and create a raised edge to further define that line of the scar. A word of warning though, the more glue you put on, the longer it will take for it to dry. This is designed to be a more subtle, smaller look. It's not supposed to be super duper deep. For that, you'll want to check out the next two looks that we do. But for now, if you try to make the ridges of your scar super thick, you're going to be waiting forever and a half for it to dry. If possible, you want to avoid working around uh, creases in your skin, like at your wrist or your knuckles, that sort of thing, because the glue as it dries will become flaky and start separating from your skin, get all wrinkly, and it basically ruins the illusion that this is your skin. Unless you're going for that look, you know, like zombie skin peeling off. As it dries, might lose some definition. You can go back in and modify, do touch-ups as it dries. But then as you have your scar and it is the size and shape and depth that you want it to be, the hardest part now is to wait for it to dry. Once your glue is dry, or at least in my case, dry enough, it's time to add some makeup to it so that we can blend this all out into our skin tone. If you still have like white patches like I do here, we're gonna make that disappear. And to do that, you will need your little makeup spongy and your foundation. Now, the foundation that's included in the Take and Make kits are actually three different shades. So if your skin just happens to match one of those already, perfect, use that one. Otherwise, to get the colors to match your skin tone, you're probably going to have to mix and match and play a little color theory with the different shades of foundation until you find something that matches your skin tone. Of course, if you already have foundation in your skin tone, you can just skip that and use your own. 
but I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of foundation on there and start dabbing it in and blending it into my skin. If you're having trouble getting it to blend nicely, you can always wet the sponge a little bit. I find that that helps a whole lot. In fact, I should have done that here and now, but I didn't. So here we are. This is the part that I haven't quite mastered yet. The edges, I'm trying to make the edges all nice and neat. So if you have any tips and tricks for me, please let me know. Now that the glue looks mostly like skin, I'm gonna pull out my makeup palette here and you can use an applicator or the Q-tip that comes with the kit, whatever works for you, your finger, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to add some color into that crevice there to give it some definition. And I tend to go in really light because I have a tendency to be a little heavy handed. And it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, mine's kind of bothering me right now because it's such a straight line and that looks a little unnatural. Typically scars have that ragged edge to them or something like that. At least they do in the movies. And while it might look like I know what I'm doing, I really don't. I'm just trying to think of what shades the skin looks like or can look like and experimenting. If it doesn't work, then you can throw some foundation on top of it, cover it back up, try again with a different color. More than one way to do this, that is for sure. Generally speaking, that is how it's done. That is a scar for you. But let's say, just for fun, you don't want this to be a scar, you want this to be a fresh cut. So let's add some blood to it. This is my homemade fresh fake blood. I found this recipe online many years ago and it hasn't led me wrong yet. And it's super simple. It's just corn syrup, chocolate syrup, and red food coloring. I tend to just eyeball it until it comes to a consistency and a shade of red that I think looks most blood-like. And you can also thin it down with water, put it in like a spritzer kind of bottle and spray it on, get that blood spatter effect. Or as I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna take the Q-tip and I'm gonna dab it into my cut here. You can add as much or as little as you'd like. If you want to add enough so that you get a nice drip effect, you can do that. Maybe you don't want gushing blood, just a hint of a shine. It is your look. You can do what you want with it. The best part about it is that it is 100% edible. So if this Halloween you really want to freak somebody out, you can just walk up all bloody to them and start licking it up. It's gross, and you'll get your chocolate fix. It doesn't get better than that. But either way, this is our scar turned cut. And now I'm going to go wash all of this off so that we can do look number two. We are going to be doing a gash. Not quite as simplistic as the scar, but not as grisly or as three-dimensional as the wound that we'll be doing next. And as I stated in the beginning, in addition to the supplies that we've already used, you will need some Kleenex. And this was included in the Take and Make kit, so if you have the kit, you already have some. And similar to the scar, we are going to start off with our canvas, for me, my hand. And we have our Kleenex and we have some glue. And to start off, we are going to take some pieces of our Kleenex and we're going to tear them off into little bits. However big or small they are depends on how big your cut is. This tissue accidentally just kind of split itself off from being two ply to one ply, but that ends up working out really well. So if you want to take the time to go ahead and split the tissue off into like one ply, two ply, I recommend doing that. It'll make the layers easier to deal with. And that's enough to get us started. And now what I'm gonna do is once again, I'm using my finger. You can use a paintbrush if you want. I'm just gonna lay down kind of thin layer of glue. Take a piece of tissue paper and lay it down and slather on some glue. Not too much because as stated in the previous look, the more glue you have, the longer it takes to dry. So if you are impatient like me, thin layers is the way to go. And then you are going to basically repeat this process over and over, adding layers of tissue and layers of glue until you have basically created a second skin for yourself. We are creating a second faux skin on top of our real skin so that we can injure the fake skin, or at least make it look like it's been injured. 
If you've ever done paper mache, it's basically the same thing. You're just paper macheing your hand, essentially. And you want the areas that overlap the most to be in the center, like over wherever you want the actual gash to be. And then thinner layers, like single pieces of tissue on the outside that basically fade into the rest of your skin. And I do recommend every few layers or so letting it dry a bit because if you put on a whole bunch of layers of glue and tissue, it's going to take forever to dry. So you basically keep adding layers until you run your finger over it and say, yeah, you know, that kind of feels like a fake layer of skin, like you're wearing a glove. All right, so I am pretty happy with the thickness of this. So now, once again, is the hardest part where we must wait and wait and wait until it is completely dry, and then we can finally move on to the next step. All right, I got ahead of myself and didn't realize that the camera was not rolling, so I have just skipped ahead a little bit. Once you have your fake Kleenex skin dry, or mostly dry at least, you can make your wound. Um, I did not because I just wasn't thinking about it at the time, but you can go ahead and use your foundation and cover it up before you tear into it, but I did not. So, once you have this set, there are different ways that you can make your wound, and it all depends on what kind of style you're going for, where you can either rip it open and just have like a tear, or you can do one where you fully tear it open and you have like a crater sized bit where someone really just took a piece out of you. I kind of went for something a little more in between, a moderately sized gaping wound. And if you're using scissors like I use, you're gonna wanna pluck at the edges of the seam here a bit to make it look a little bit more ragged, like torn flesh sort of a thing. Otherwise it'll look a little bit too perfect. But once you have torn open your fake skin, we can now make it look like real skin. By taking some foundation, I wet my sponge a little bit so that it'll spread a little bit more evenly and be a little bit easier to blend. And we're just gonna dab it right on. Try to blend it in as much as we possibly can. Easier said than done when it's fake skin on top of real skin, but you know, we try our best. Don't forget to get the underside of the tissue as well when you're applying your foundation. It'll be kind of a dead giveaway if the outside skin is fleshy, but the inside skin is bright white. All right, so now we have this gaping hole in our skin, our fake skin, that is. Now we just need to make it look like it's actually wounded. And for that, I'm gonna once again bring out some eyeshadow. And you can use an applicator, I'm just using a Q-tip, you can use your finger, whatever works. And I'm gonna start with my darkest shade, and apply it to the inside skin here. If you really wanna get into it, you can look up tutorials on how to make it look bruised around the edges, depending on how old you want this wound to look. Maybe that'll help blend some of the outer edges here with the glue in, cover it up. And once again, even with the eyeshadow, if you have open flaps of skin like I have here, don't forget to do the inside edges. And it's okay if the skin underneath looks patchy. The patchiness will actually let it look a little bit more like wounded insides. So in this case, messier is actually better. I'm going with shades of dark brown bordering on red, because that's more along the lines of what a deep wound would look like but you can use whatever colors you want. Maybe you are a monster that bleeds green, or maybe it's a fresher gash and is bright red. It is also okay to color outside the lines. Obviously there's gonna be some damage all around the wound, not just to the immediately affected areas. As I said earlier, you can use some of that color to hide some of the imperfections caused by the glue and the tissue, you know, where it's kind of obvious that it's makeup. This is where if you're dressing up as a zombie, you get off really lucky. Nobody cares that your skin's peeling off because that's what zombies do. And then once you are satisfied with the carnage you have done to your skin, we can add some fake blood to this and really get the party started. Because you can walk around just like this. And that can be especially effective if you're going as a zombie, so your wounds are probably dried up and decaying rather than like freshly inflicted or something like that. But if your wound is the kind that would still be bleeding, we can bring out our blood here. 
As I said in the last part, this is just corn syrup, chocolate syrup, and food coloring. You can thicken it up till it's like kind of congealed, that sort of thing. Or you can water it down and put it in one of those like mister spray bottles and get a spray effect going. Also make sure you coat the inside skin as well. Go around the edges and then you can spread out from there however you want. If you want droplets, you can go with droplets. If you want to spray it on there, spray it on there. I just got a whiff of the chocolate syrup in the blood and realized I am far too hungry to be doing this right now. Gruesome. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So that is our gash wound. So I'm gonna clean this off and we'll jump into our next one. And our last look for the day is a wound. This one's a little bit different than the other ones that we've done so far. A little bit more flexible and best of all, no glue. So not nearly as much waiting time. This one's also different because you will need some Vaseline or petroleum jelly and some flour, or in my case, I'm using cornstarch because that's what I had on hand. Those are not included in the take and make kit though. All right, so first up, we're gonna need that Vaseline, our cornstarch or flour, whatever you have, and our foundation. And we are going to mix up basically our own pseudo prosthetic stuff. And I don't have a recipe for this, so we are just winging it, eyeballing it, and then mixing it until we find the right consistency, mixture, and quantity that we're looking for. I'm going to create a mess here. The mixing is difficult, and in fact, I am just gonna give up and combine this with my hands. Make sure your hands are clean. Despite the paint on my hands, my hands actually have just been washed. I was just spray painting earlier and that paint doesn't come off so easily. The goal here is to create a paste or like a dough of sorts that you can use to sculpt whatever, you know, pseudo prosthetic you want to use. It's just a much cheaper way to do it than buying latex or whatever it is that you get at the store. My formula here is still a bit too creamy for my taste. It's not going to hold up very well. I want a more dough-like consistency, I think. So I'm going to add some more cornstarch here. If you have one of those like infuser things with like itty bitty little mixers, that might work better here, certainly than my finger. But we work with what we have. And this kind of pasty material is more along the lines of what I was looking for. Very thick and almost dry because due to the Vaseline, it's not going to fully dry. So you kind of want it to be hard to begin with because whatever this is now is what it's always going to be. I'm going to clean up my little area here and come back. Now that we have our concoction made, we are going to basically mold ourselves a wound. And the nice part about this is that, well, one, you don't have to wait for glue to dry, but two, because the foundation has already been mixed in with it, you don't have to apply makeup later. It's very much a one-stop shop. But this way you can build it up and you can create a 3D effect of whatever it is that you want to create. Doesn't even have to be wounds. Maybe you want to, I don't know, create scales. That might be a little difficult. Create roughened skin for like a zombie. Really, the sky's the limit. As for me, I'm gonna be kind of basic and I'm just gonna make a wound for lack of creativity at the moment. And in comparing it to the last one, you don't get that flayed skin look. This one's better maybe for a stab rather than a slash. But with the edges, you want to smooth them out so that they blend in with the skin. This is also a little bit easier to do than it is with the glue, because you know the glue kind of flakes off at the edges. Whereas this is much smoother and easier to blend. And if it doesn't match completely, that's okay. You can cover it up with makeup later. I'm also doing a little bit of a disservice to myself because your skin changes in tone depending on where on the body it is. So like, 
This foundation matches the skin on my face just fine, but you can tell on the back of my hand here that's a little bit paler. It's just not quite the same shade. So if I were really trying to make this look authentic, I would probably have mixed together a different shade of foundation. So keep that in mind as you are planning your looks that you want to do. Don't count on your skin being the same tone everywhere, because it probably isn't. Now, I'm not very good at sculpting, but I imagine you can probably play around with the texture, carve things into it. Maybe you can take some wrapped up foil and like stick it in there to give it a really rough texture. You can certainly carve things into it, like maybe bolts, um, like mechanical bolts if you're a robot. That's where you could probably draw in scales if you wanted to. But I'm actually kind of liking the consistency of this it really does at least up close i don't know how much it's coming across in the camera but up close it really looks like skin and it's kind of creepy i like it and i'm not sure that it's really fair to claim that the dried glue on the skin was more durable but you do have to be a little bit more careful with this stuff because it never dries you're kind of always going to have to be careful not to oh see i like that texture just some crumpled up paper towel. This is a nice roughened look, pretty cool. But because this never really dries, you're not gonna wanna put this on an area of your body where you're gonna bump into things or brush up against things because any little thing is going to make an imprint in this. So this might be better suited to your face if you can keep your hands to yourself. You could also add things to this, like stick props in it. Like if you want this, if you're going for like a Frankenstein look, or rather Frankenstein's monster, like you could put some fishing line in there or something like that, kind of just stick it in there. And then you have some stitches, some very real looking stitches. All right, now because this shade of foundation doesn't perfectly match the skin on the back of my hand here, I am gonna do a little touch up with my sponge and my foundation here. Just dabbing it on around the edges and tapering it off. All right, I think that is as good as I'm gonna get with this shade of foundation anyway. So now let's gruesome this bad boy up a bit. And once again, just dabbing on. Starting with the darkest part. Going into the deepest corners of this supposed wound. This works better when you have a smaller brush or something that can really get into those tiny crevices. I'm just using my finger as a different brush. Just using the barest amount of eyeshadow to tap outwards, give it kind of a faded look, almost as if the skin is bruised or something. At least theoretically, like I said, I'm not a doctor, not a detective. Watch a lot of true crime, but that does not make me an expert. However far out you want to take the color, all depends on you and what kind of look you're going for. I decided to just kind of go for it, and I like the effect. I think it makes it look bruised and more gross. And honestly, that is most of what any kind of art is, makeup or otherwise. It's just doing things and seeing what happens. Sometimes it pays off. Like I think, this time, it pays off. Sometimes it doesn't, and you live and you learn and you start over again. Take a lighter color here around the edges so it doesn't look like such a stark contrast. Decided to highlight the knuckles, because maybe in theory this person got into a fight. And there we have it. I'm pretty happy with that, if I do say so myself. Very gruesome, very bloody, very demure. And you can totally walk around with it just like this. I could totally be considered a completed look. But why should it be when you can add fake blood? Now because of the oil and the Vaseline, it's not sticking or spreading as much as it did in the other looks, but I think that's okay too. It kind of gives it that congealed look. And similar to what I did with the eyeshadow, I am just going to start spreading out and see what happens here. And that I don't like as much, but now we know. This is the kind of look that looks like it needs a good blood drip, but I don't know if I'm going to get it. 
Mm, kind of. Close enough. But you know what? Either way, I like it. I'm gonna call it there. It's gruesome. It's bloody. It's perfect. And thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you learned something. I hope it gave you inspiration or some combination of those. And as a reminder, you can pick up the materials for at least the first two looks from this video at the York Public Library. It's part of our Take and Make kit for teens this month. If you missed it or you're not a teen yet, you can always check out what else is going on at the library at yclibrary.org. See you next time and happy Halloween.